let us briefly revisit isoquants and then we'll move on to the cost side. And based on the properties we know an isoquant will be convex to the origin and this is this particular isoquant is strictly convex to the origin. And this is based on the following that there are different technologies available and these different technologies permit us to use different combinations of labor and capital. Now suppose you have only one technology available. You want to produce 100 units of output and you can produce this when factors have to be used in fixed proportion. So you'll need 100 units of workers and 100 units of capital to produce this level of output. So in this case, the isoquant will be L-shaped. And if you decide to say, use 100 units of machines and use 200 workers, the output will still be 100 units. So, <clears throat> so if you have one technology available, remember an isoquant will be L-shaped. Now suppose there is another technology available. Let me just draw this. And another L-shaped figure. And let me just join these. So, and this again represents, say, 100 units of output as well. So both these places you can produce 100 units of output. And suppose here, what you require, require is say more workers and less capital. So let us assume this is 150 and this is 50. Now look at these two technologies and what you find is you could be able to produce the same level of output but you're using different combinations of labor and capital. And suppose you are given a, another technology and let us just draw that. See here somewhere, here somewhere. And here again you produce say 100 units of output. Let me just make it as perfect as I can. And here what you find is you produce the same level of output, but you're using fewer workers and more machines. So this could represent 50. This could be 150. And so when you have different technologies available, there are different combinations of labor and capital you can use. And when you join these all these points, what you get is a typical isoquan. So remember this, if there's only one technology available, you will have an L-shaped isoquan. And if you have two technologies available, there might be some gaps in the isoquan. And if you have a number of technologies available, what you will get is a continuous isoquan. This is another shape of an isoquan, and this is a straight line. And that simply means you have to give up fixed quantity of capital when you decide to increase labor by one unit. So whether you are here or whether you are here, the amount of capital you give up will be the same uh, all across this isoquant. And why is this happening? Because it has constant slope or MRTSLK is a fixed number. Now let us revisit the financial side of production. And we know total cost is given to us by this equation, where W times L is your labor cost, R times K is your capital cost. And in the long run, we can vary all inputs. Now, what we will assume is wages and rent are given to the firm, and so these are treated as constant, something that the firm cannot change. The only thing the firm can change is labor and capital because they are treated as variable inputs. As an example, let us assume wages equal $5 
and rent also equals $5. And the firm decides to spend, say, $50 on producing some level of output. And, and the firm can choose different combinations of labor and capital. Based on the financial numbers that we have assumed, that is wages equal rent equals $5 and total cost equals $50, the different combinations of labor and capital that the firm can use and it will still cost $50. For example, if the firm decides to use no workers and 10 machines, what will be the total cost of production? It will be $50. Because 5 times 0, the quantity of labor is 0. 10, which is the quantity of capital, times 5, which is the rent, will equal $50. Or the firm can use one worker and nine machines. And again, the total cost will be $50. And in this way, we can find out different combinations of labor and capital, which will cost us $50 when wages and rent equal five dollars here what i have done is i have units of capital on the vertical axis this one and units of labor on the horizontal axis and what we have done is we have plotted points based on the previous table which is different combinations of labor and capital which cost the same to the firm and and when you join these points what this line represents is different combinations of labor and capital which cost the same to the firm and this line or curve is called the tot the iso cost curve iso cost curve and what is iso iso means equal and you have cost, so equal cost. And this is what this represents. This line represents. And so ISO cost line represents different combinations of labor and capital which cost the same to the firm and by this we mean the firm is spending fifty dollars on total cost and so here what I've done is I've written down the definition of ISO cost line now look at this ISO cost line it is very similar to what we had encountered on the consumer side and consumer side the budget line and so we should be able to figure out what will be the intercept on the y-axis what will be the intercept on the x-axis and what will be the slope of this iso cost line and if you remember what we had talked about when we looked at the consumer theory the vertical the intercept on the vertical axis will be simply total cost divided by the price of capital, which is rent. Intercept on the x-axis will be total cost divided by price of labor, which is W. And the slope will be negative W by R. And so this is what I have written here and so you have this summary on this diagram what we have done is we have brought isoquant and iso cost on the same diagram and we once again have units of capital on the vertical axis and units of labor on the horizontal axis this purple line represents the ISO cost line and this red curve is your ISO quant curve and wherever they meet this point is called equilibrium 
and this is the point of tangency between the isoquant and the isocost line and we believe at equilibrium the firm is paying the lowest possible cost so the firm would like to be here since this is the point of tangency that simply means that simply means that the slope of an isoquant will equal the slope of an isocost line and here is the condition for equilibrium and that is the slope of isoquant is marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital and this must equal the slope of the isocost line which is given by wages divided by rent so when the firm hits this point and this is given by equality between these two this will represent the best point or equilibrium point and why is this the lowest cost point for the firm consider the following suppose wages and rent are still the same and there is another budget line let us just draw this here now you can still be on this original iso quant and if wages and rent are fixed you are spending more money on this iso cost line relative to the purple one and what this tells you is that this is lower than the one represented by the the total cost is lower represented by purple line relative to the blue line and if we had say an iso cost line here the firm cannot produce 100 units of output so so what equilibrium represents is once again the best point and it represents the least cost required to produce a given level of output and through equilibrium what we find is the following we drop this point to the horizontal axis and this will give us the quantity of workers the firm will hire and if you drop this to the vertical axis you will also find out what is the amount of capital that the firm will use in order to produce 100 units of output at the lowest possible point and thus equilibrium is an efficient point or in other words it's the lowest cost paid by the producer to produce 100 units of output on this diagram we do some comparative statics we have equilibrium e1 e1 and this is given by the fact we have an isoquant where the firm is producing 100 units of output and we are given an iso cost line like this one and the point of tangency between these two gives us the best point and here the firm is using 100 units of workers and 100 units of capital now let us assume that wages equal rent equal dollar 5 so how much will be the total cost represented by this iso cost line this will be 1000 dollars 1000 dollars 1000 dollars and now we have another iso cost line here and this iso cost line and the iso quant where output is defined at 250 gives us the new equilibrium point e2 based on this equilibrium point we know how many workers will be used 150 how many units of capital will be used 150 and and so we can figure out how much is the total cost when the firm is at e2 150 times 5 will be 750 and and so we add those two and what we get is 1500 dollars as the total cost and so we know total cost at each equilibrium point we also know how much output is produced at each Uh, equilibrium point and we also know how many workers and capital are being used at each equilibrium point so this ends our discussion of iso cost and iso quant